Hi, everybody. David Dilling here on behalf of Mark Schreier. And this is an interesting one, kind of a fun. I kind of I find it. I find it fun. You know, it's uh, it's very interesting. A lot of people are copying, pasting from different applications into InDesign. And for instance, in this case, this person had a question. Hello, Mark Schreier. I had a large. This was open on YouTube. It's open comment on our video InDesign corrupt file tip. Do not embed links or images. Anyway, hello, Mark Schreier. I had a large illustration file that need to be recreated on InDesign. I copied and pasted the InDesign file. Now I can't find any links when I open the properties. So he copied and pasted the InDesign file. And a lot of people are doing this and you can read about that on the help page on InDesign importing files and I'll put that down below. So let's go see how this works. Could be a little bit of a longer video because I'm going to show you, you know, tat for tit, what goes on here. What is that? Tit for tat or tat for tit? Tit for tat. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. So I have over here an Illustrator file I've been working on for years. It's kind of a mess. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is not perfect. I'm going to ignore that on purpose, too. So here we have uh, an Illustrator file. You'll see it's comprised of different elements and, you know, groups. This is, you know, anyway, long story. But nonetheless, there's a lot going on in here. A handy little file, by the way, because, you know, which version of InDesign is uh, 2021 or what CS6, which version of InDesign is that actually, you know, get asked that quite a bit. And this way you can quickly see, well, CS6 is a version eight of InDesign, et cetera. Let's go into InDesign first. We're going to, you know, work on all the latest 2021 here. We'll make a new file. All right. So we'll make a new InDesign file. Now what you can do, you can take elements from the this this thing. You can take this text here. If you copy text, Command C or Edit Copy, and you go into Illustrator. Sorry, and you go into InDesign, and you do Command P or Edit Paste. What you get it looks like you got the text, but if you actually try to get in there and double click, you'll see that it's not text. It's actually just been outlined. Because it's very dangerous when you do that. There is a nice tool from uh, our friends in England that will actually, I think, re uh, retextify this, which is really neat. It's really By the way, I just wanted to get this in here because these, this is uh, Astute Graphics is the name of that company. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, it's been two years since I've been to a trade show. So, um, yeah, and and a really cool little thing like how to convert outline text to edible text with Vector First Aid is the name of their product. And what's cool is you get uh, you buy one, you they only have one product now. All their all nineteen of their plugins are just one product, so it's really cool. But it was really neat the demonstration I saw because we've all had outline text that we wish wasn't outlined, and of course this tool brings it back to live text again. So anyway, just a little side mention of Astute Graphics and their how to convert outline text to edible text. And I'll put this link down below. I digress, or actually not digress, it's really neat, really neat tool. And then we can take like some of these other ones here, like all these. I'm holding shift and I'm selecting this text because I don't want that again to get rid of it. And when I copy this, I go back into Illustrator, sorry, go back into InDesign, and I paste this command V on the, on the Macintosh, you get all the individual elements and the text. Once again, be careful. What you'll notice is these elements now, if I go to the links panel, and let's just take one more for the heck of it. By the way, you can also just, if I put my InDesign window over here and I get me really small, I can now, oops, I can now take a file and drag and drop it into from Illustrator into InDesign, which is really neat. Now these are files on my on my um, hard drive. Of course, this is the ID Marks box shot. But what you'll notice if I go up into in the InDesign now, not in Illustrator, I'm in InDesign. If I go Window uh, Links. You'll see there's no links in here, but I, I should have all these as links, right? Well, they get actually input as embedded graphics. So no longer links on your computer, they're embedded graphics now. You'll also notice, I screwed it up here. Let me, let me start over again. You'll see 
when you drag and drop some elements like this one here, it takes actual, um, if I don't mess around with it, it stays okay. You see this drop shadow, which I applied in, in Illustrator. No, no, sorry, this drop shadow was applied in the native uh, PSD file. You'll see that if I start messing with it, it gets, it gets oddballed. So you'd be really careful because these are not linked elements. You can't just resize it will like that. You have to be really careful. So now this is to give you a little test. I'm going to do file save as. And we're going to call this AI to InDesign or as you see, keeping it short. Let's put it down there and down and downloads. Throw this stuff all away later, okay? Uh, Illustrator, we don't need to keep anymore. And now what I want to show is our new tool. You just saw ID Marks in that there. But I'm going to show our new tool, PDF Marks, which is right now it's called PDF DTP. It's going to be coming out as PDF Marks any day now. By the time you see this, it might even be out. It also works within InDesign as a script, which, well, I don't have it installed in 2021, but it will be up in 2020, have it installed appear to be a convert uh, PDF document. Uh, the reason I don't install it is because I prefer to use the um, standalone application. And it'll work the same way with this native Illustrator file as with the PDF. So PDF Marks actually handle native Illustrator files. So if I take an Illustrator file, I drop it on PDF Marks. You see, I first get a preview of the document. Oh, yeah. I have it set up, by the way, in the... Um, in the automation here, I have it set up to automatically make an IDML and export from my last demonstration. So now what I got is I got from this Illustrator file, I now got an IDML, which means I effectively can take Illustrator InDesign with a click. Now we're getting somewhere, right? So I think you see where I'm going with this, this long little demonstration here. So now let's get into where you can export manuals, go export IDML, click export, save it to downloads. You'll see it show up here. Now what's cool, look at that. We get all of the, that were embedded in the file, exported out as new images. With the drop shadow. In this case, it's not a big deal because I have I have these files. But if you don't have them, wow! Like maybe this gentleman and I know many because I see on the internet all the people searching and asking about this. Let's go back here to the IDML now and open that up in InDesign 2021. I'll take a sip of coffee. Well, that was quick. I didn't get a chance to sip my coffee. <laughs> Look at that, guys. We now have this native Adobe Illustrator file, which you just saw in Illustrator, now popped right open to InDesign with images linked in the images panel. They are TIFFs now. They are, you know, obviously they're exported or extracted at a resolution used. There's, there are some drawbacks, but look at this. We get all the text here. It's, you see, direct, with Native Illustrator and even with PDF, sometimes there'll be some touching up, but you see the text is there, and it's live text. It's not created to outlines. Everything is right there. I can now go in there, pump up the size, whatever the heck I want to do. It's, it's an actual text, live text, not created to outlines. It's just, I mean, it's just amazing. It's right here. So now you got your, your link, this, this was all one big image, it's right there. Uh, yeah, it's all just right there for us now to use in InDesign. So does, this person's question is more on the printing quality, but you see how this works. How you can take, instead of copying and pasting from Illustrator into InDesign, you can now just convert uh, natively a .ai Illustrator file right into InDesign with a click. So instead of getting outline text, with individual graphics that aren't um, linked as new links. They're embedded in the file, which makes huge files, which creates bad files in a lot of cases, making these huge, big 
files are dangerous, particularly with a lot of embedded images. You're just embedding a few small things, fine, but embedding too much, we've seen a lot of corrupt files from that. So this is really, uh, I just find it amazing. Now, just, just for prosperity's sake, I'm just going to show you here the uh, help from uh, helpx.adobe.com forward slash InDesign using importing files applications. And it says, facing Illustrator graphics into InDesign. Now that goes, and you'll see that it, it clearly uh, says artwork copy from Illustrator and paste InDesign is embedded in the InDesign document. No link to Bridget Illustrator file is created. If you drag text, if you drag text from Illustrator and InDesign, it's converted to outlines and isn't editable with the text tool. Both of these are possible with MarkSquare's PDF marks. You can import, actually convert native.ai or P PDF files right in to InDesign. And other TTP file formats as well. PDF marks will convert to IDML, will convert to Affinity Publisher, Cork Express. I'm really excited about it. I hope you are too. If you want more information, cruise over to markster.com forward slash products. Check out. Today it's called PDF DTP. Tomorrow, well, not literally, but hopefully next week, it'll be now PDF marks. We're switching to the new PDF marks that you just saw right there. PDF marks is really cool. It'll just open up any file. Here's a, a native PDF to show you how it works with PDF files. You get a little file info here, and you get the full preview of the file, and then you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to just export one page? Or do you want to export the whole thing? Do you want to open it up in InDesign? Well, you just click Open in InDesign. And off it goes, creating the IDML and opening it right up in Adobe InDesign for us with a click or two. And there we go. This file is right up there as a totally new InDesign file. It's just a PDF, which you saw right there. I can now go in there, substitute fonts, change, change fonts. I can um, edit imagery as desired. Do whatever I need to do. It's a completely new file. And but a bing, bada boom, it's right in to InDesign, a PDF file in that case. So open and show you one of our new products in development. We're looking for beta testers. Email sales at marks.com if you'd like to be a beta tester of our new FlightCheck Express, which is the first of the new FlightCheck engine products we're creating. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, I'm going to take both the InDesign file we just created and the other one we just created. Command select both and compare those. All right, so you see we get a preview just like in our conversion process, the new FlightCheck Express. And I can even break this one free like this. So now we can see, you see we have some problems with the, the outline text here. <clears throat> some problems with the outline text here um, because I was messing around with it. So anyway, this is in beta, by the way. What I want to show you in particular, you see on this one, where we copy and paste it, it says embedded. But on this one, where we actually converted with the MarkSquare technology, you see they're not embedded. They're actually linked, as you saw in, uh, in InDesign. And let's say you want to go there and actually edit a particular image, like, oh, I want to actually swap that one out. We just click Show in InDesign, and boom, look at what happens. It takes us not only into InDesign, but actually selects the problem image in this case. Now, imagine a multi-page file would be pretty amazing. Just wanted to add it in there. Another little sneak preview, FlightCheck Express, looking for beta testers, email sales at marks.com. So that's Marks PDF Marks. As you can see, it's a very valuable tool to help you with getting native Illustrator files right in to InDesign and PDFs as well, as you saw. More information, cruising over to Marksware. David Dilley from Marksware, wishing you a fantastic day.